well, since we know how much it costs per kilometer, let's just figure out the kilometers. So the pipe on the land, we just talked about this, but the pipe on the land is from P to B. That's our 8 minus X. So if we know that the distance of pipe is 8 minus X, and it costs a half a dollar per kilometer, this is, this is how many kilometers we're going to have of land pipe. We're just going to take half of that, and that's going to be the number of dollars we're going to spend for the pipe on the land. You okay with this so far? That's going to be added to the pipe at C. Now we just figured out how much pipe we have at C. It's a square root of x squared plus 25. That's how many kilometers of pipe we're going to have under the sea or, or at the sea, in the sea. Each of those kilometers costs a dollar. So if I multiply a dollar times each of those kilometers, I'll have the total cost for the pipe at C. And that's how you figure out the cost function in terms of x, the distance that you're looking for. Raise your hand if you're okay with that so far. I think that's where we, we actually left off last time. Now, what do you want to do? What do we want to do with this? Maybe before we take the derivative, make it look a little bit better. Right? Probably distribute that half into that 8 minus x, because you don't want to start dealing with derivatives until it looks kind of pretty. Deal with that one out front that looks nasty, so well, it does not do anything, but it looks silly. One times anything is anything, so the square root of x squared plus 25. Plus, this is going to give you 4 minus x over 2, or 1 half x if you prefer. Still okay so far? Now, that's our cost function. And that's what we're trying to minimize. Maybe do one more thing with that square root. What would you change the square root into? One half. To the one half. Not negative one half, right? Not negative two, but to the one half. If that's the function we're trying to minimize, here's what you know about maxima and minima. Absolute value. Or I'm sorry, absolute maximum, absolute minimum. You know that they occur at endpoints or critical numbers. We know that for a fact, right? It's the only thing that happens with continuous functions, and that's continuous on the interval. So it's either going to be at endpoints or critical numbers. We have our endpoints, which we'll check in a while. We don't have critical numbers. How do you find critical numbers? That's where the calculus comes in for maximizing things, it, or minimizing things. It says you find out where the critical numbers are. Those are the only places besides endpoints where you could possibly have an absolute max or an absolute min in our case. Do you follow me? Go ahead and take the first derivative there. What type of rule do you need to apply to take the first derivative here? General power. General power. get that far? What key piece of information have I left out so far? The exponent. The exponent. Don't forget the exponent. You're subtracting one, right? You're not subtracting one half, you're subtracting one. So if we take one half minus one, I, I need to be getting that negative one half. Did you get that as well? Okay. Then derivative of the inside, we know that because that is a general power rule. How about the four? Zero. How about this? Oh, good, okay. So not a, another product rule or anything crazy. You just take the derivative of that little piece. That's negative one half. Now, this is going to equal one half x squared plus 25 to the negative one half times derivative to it minus one half. Now, I know I get crazy on you guys about parentheses. I know I do. Should you have parentheses around this? No. No. If this had all been in parentheses, then yes, you would have, but you don't. This is minus one half at the very end. Do you follow me on that? In this case, that says that this one half and this two, that is something that you can simplify out. Does that make sense? I'll show you in two steps. This will be 2x over 2 square root of x squared plus 25, true statement, minus one half. 
This one. And then the twos are gone. So the first derivative of our cost function, which we're trying to minimize in this case, is x. x squared plus 25 square root minus 1 half. That looks fairly nasty enough. What are you supposed to do with that thing? That's our first derivative. What does the first derivative stand for? Slope. Slope, okay. What do we do with that? Can you explain why? I know we talked about a lot. Can you explain why we have to set our first derivative equal to zero? Why do we do that? Because your maximum minimum is going to be wherever the slope is zero. Very good. So we know that maximum, absolute, what he said, was absolute maximum, absolute minimum have to be at one of a couple places. First, endpoints could happen. But if they don't happen at endpoints, they will happen where we change from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. In either case, the slope will be zero at that point. So if we set our slope equal to zero, that will solve for the only points where we could possibly change from going up to going down or going down to going up. Does that make sense? That's why we set it equal to zero. So let's do that. Oh, goodness. Uh, what now? Cry. Cry. <laughs> Give up. Go on spring break. Let's just leave. <clears throat> no, seriously, what do you do? Conjugate. No conjugate. <coughs> Probably add one half. Why add one half? Well, you actually have something nice here. Kind of nice. A little bit nice. Not super nice, but a little bit nice. Do you see what you have here? You have a fraction equal to a fraction, right? That's called a... Starts with a P, rhymes with or portion. <laughs> <laughs> proportion. Proportion. Yeah, proportion. What do you do with proportions? Oh dear me, yeah, you press multiply. That's fine, that's great. Press multiply them. Go da 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 da. You're going to have 2x equals 1 times the square root of 25, uh, x squared plus 25. That looks a lot better. Why does it look a lot better? You already have a square root isolated. Get rid of a square root, how do you do it? <laughs> square. Square, both sides. So let's square both sides. Don't forget that when you square both sides, you're not just squaring the x, you're squaring the 2x. Do you follow me? Square, square, gone. 4x squared equals x squared plus 25. Nothing changes, no distribution. X square, the, the square and the square root, those are gone. They're inverse, operate, they're inverse exponents. In fact, if you think about it, it's actually 1 half to the second power, right? You multiply exponents and they're being raised to each other, that means 2 times 1 half is 1. So it just disappears. It's great. What now? Solve for x. So I would probably subtract the x squared from both sides. Since there's not an x term, this is nicer. This is 3x squared equals 25. You with me? There's no nasty factoring to be done, nothing like that. Get rid of the 3. How do you get rid of the 3? When there's not an x term, this is the way you deal with quadratic. You just solve it for the x squared and take a square root of both sides. If there was an x term, you'd have to use quadratic formula, or you'd have to factor it, or complete the square. But when there's no x term, no just x to the first power term, this is nice. Divide by 3, you get x squared equals 25 over 3. Get rid of the square. <laughs> Sorry, what does that again? <coughs> so square of both sides. What do you need when you square root both sides? Plus one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you have to show that. So you get the square root of 25 over 3, plus or minus, of course. That's going to be plus or minus 5 over root 3. If you rationalize, multiply by root 3 over root 3, you know what rationalization is, right? You're going to get 5 root 3 over 3.
Tell me something about one of these numbers. Say again, why, why is the negative not, it's not an answer? Right. It's, not. it's not in there. It's not in there at all. This is actually negative. That would be this case. That would be going this way. We don't want to go that way. Okay. So we're not going to take the negative. So our only critical number Five root three over three. Now, do you automatically know that that's going to minimize our cost? Not really. You do have to check it. Okay. So, what if we, what if we did this derivative, and that actually was not this? It could very well be this, couldn't it? What if we did that? We would have just maximized our cost. Now, intuitively, we probably think that this is going to be a minimum because we're, we're kind of thinking. This is really expensive. This is the longest distance, so it's probably somewhere in between there. But you have to check. I mean, people have made some serious mistakes by taking a derivative and not checking whether they had the minimum or the maximum. With simple formulas like this, you can think about it. But advanced formulas, oh man, you got to check. The way you check is either with a second derivative, right? Either that, um, and that would test concavity for you, and say, oh, okay, take take that point in the second derivative. Uh, if it's negative, that's a maximum. If it's positive, that's a minimum. Does that make sense? Because that will tell you concavity. Or you do the analysis that I showed you how to do. You make your first derivative test. You say increasing, decreasing, increasing. And that's going to give you what type of maximum you have. Or you check the endpoints on these intervals. So that's like three different ways you can check. We know that all of our possible max and mins have to occur here, here, or there. That's it. So if we plug in those three values, one of them will give us a minimum. So I'm going to go back over here. We're going to check these points. By the way, when we're checking points like this, are we using the first derivative, or are we using the original function where I'm checking absolute, like absolute max and min? What am I checking? The original one, the original one. yeah, because that's telling us actually the, the cost, the actual cost there. So I'm looking here, right there, I'll be plugging in zero, or I'll be plugging in eight, or one of them. Can you help me out with that? Zero is nine. So this was x. And this is our cost, right? So zero would give us a cost of nine dollars. Nine dollars. Now, if this is a billion, actually a billion instead of like one, that's nine billion dollars. I don't know how much it is. How about eight? What would you say, eight? Okay. How about five root three over three? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what five root three over three is. I'm gonna have it written down. 